Welcome back into the Sports Source. Uh, this segment brought to you by the historic Topoco Lodge. Right now, you know, they are just over the state line in North Carolina. Literally, it's like feet. Uh, and the state of North Carolina is looking at a mid-May reopening for restaurants, which would be the Topoco Tavern. Uh, and then we're, you know, the question mark still remains over when they can get the lodge back open. They're certainly working on the, all the cleaning and procedures you can go through. In the meantime, uh, visit Topoco.com for latest news. You can also follow them on Facebook. Uh, they're on social media, Instagram. They're always post posting stuff there. Gift cards are available right now. Uh, it's a good way to help a, uh, a historic business here in East Tennessee and a company that brings you this show every week. Gift cards available from the Topoco Tavern and the Topoco Lodge. Go to Topoco.com. Okay, it is the year 2020, in case you didn't know. So we're doing a segment here with no games, looking <laughs> back at past games. And it's, we're calling it Hindsight 2020, but I did want to mention this. We did a thing last week where Mike Strange, Josh Ward, and myself ranked the best offensive, one-game offensive performance we've ever seen out of a single player. We had Chuck Webb in the Cotton Bowl against Arkansas. <laughs> we had Jamal Lewis as a freshman against Georgia. We had uh, Alvin Kamara against, Alvin Kamara against uh, Texas A&M mm -hmm. in 2016. And then Bob Hodge, I'll give him credit. He said, no Travis Stevens from the 2001 Florida game? That should have been on our list. <laughs> so we'll see mm -hmm. if, if you have any that we should have put on this list. What I asked these guys to do, best one-game performance from a Tennessee defense you've ever seen. And, Chuck, I've got your graphic ready. Yes. Tell us about your, your pick. Oh, I mean, that was the first one that, that came to mind because of, of how it happened. Tennessee was a seven-and-a-half-point underdog. In, Always in, with the gambling in, game. In that Sugar Bowl. Miami comes in 10-1. and one, uh, Had beaten Notre Dame 58-7. to seven. The last game was arrogant. Uh, averaged averaged 36.2 points per game that year, taking out the Tennessee game. And even, I mean, there was arrogance. They had to, I believe, cancel even some of the team functions because of the way Miami players were acting. At the pregame coin toss, Tennessee's captains stick out their hands. The Miami captains turned and looked the other way. Wouldn't even shake their I hands. I don't remember that. Okay. Yes, sir. I it's didn't true. Know that uh, and then Miami. Uh, goes up 7 nothing on the touchdown pass, uh, pass Vinny Testaverde to Michael Irvin. I think Chuck hindsight 2020 has <laughs> oh. got a little orange hue to it. I think, I think these, are, these are the Chuck. This is how he but, sees the world. The, the defensive performance is Tennessee opened yeah. in a soft zone defense, which a lot of people played because of the Miami speed. We have to cover three different games. Okay. All right. But we anyway, <laughs> Ken Donahue switched to a man-to-man -man and blitzed them. Tennessee wins 35-7. to 7. 77,000 fans, most of them Tennessee Orange, yeah, baby. Right. <laughs> what the, the, you saw the players listed on that team. Vinny Testaverde, Brian Blades, Brett Perriman. Yes. Uh, Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin yeah. caught the touchdown 18-yard touchdown. Yeah. Uh, so, and held them to seven, a team that averaged 36 points. Jimmy Himes, your best defensive performance that you saw came from 1998. Tennessee beating Florida, and that's all I got time for because Chuck took all my time. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. That was a that was a not a not the best Florida offense, Spurrier said, but it was a really good offensive team, uh, averaging 33 points as you can see. Uh, Tennessee, as I remember, Florida threw them for about 400 yards, but they also had minus yards rushing. Tennessee for six turnovers. And Tennessee was able to beat a really, really good Florida team. Uh, one of Al Wilson's signature performances. Yeah, he caused yeah. three of those six yeah. turnovers. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then the uh, my best defensive performance that I go with, we'll put this up here, and it's not just because I despise Ohio State from living <laughs> up there, but 1996, <laughs> if you remember, Jimmy, we were doing a television show with Mike Keith uh, across the street, and we did a big preview of this game, mm -hmm. and we were all just amazed at this Ohio State offense Eddie George won every award you could win that year. Orlando Pace, one of the best linemen. Uh, Terry Glenn was the best receiver in the country. Ricky Dudley was a first-round draft pick. Quarterback Bobby Hoying was a third-round draft pick. On defense, you had Sean Springs and Mike Vrabel. But you look, that team averaged 38 points a game, and Tennessee held them to 14 points in that game and stuffed them. <laughs> on a, uh, a goal line stand, Eddie George and Orlando Pace got blocked down on a goal line stand. Bill Duff? Build up, <laughs> and when I wound up moving to Columbus, Ohio, uh, people would find out I was from Tennessee, and the first words out of their mouth were, cleat gate. <laughs> and I would say, what? Cleat gate? Get your own cleats. That, that is a thing up there, man. It has yeah. never been forgotten. Down here, we all went, oh, some of the guys had longer cleats, so what? Up there, 
That game was won because Tennessee cheated with their cleats. <laughs> John Cooper's on that camp, too. I've heard him talk about that. Yeah. That Ohio State team and that Miami team that Chuck was talking about, those were two of the most talented teams Tennessee's ever gone against. Yeah. There was an unbelievable array of skill on that, those yeah. teams. Yeah. So, I think those are pretty good. I wonder if we forgot any. You can text me or tweet me or email me or whatever to let us know what we forgot. Uh, when we come back, Eve Pons. Well, let me do this first. Thank you. Uh, my director's reminding me. Phoenix Conversions, they are currently doing business by appointment. Now, that could change any day now, depending on the city and the county. So, you want to follow them on Facebook. You want to you go call them at 670-4060 to either A, set up an appointment, before they reopen or B, get information about when they are going to reopen on a, at a full level. But right now, as far as I know this morning, currently doing business by appointment, Phoenix Conversions. Give them a shout. Okay, up next, we'll finish with Eve Pons entering the NBA draft, probably just going to check his draft stock. But how big of a hit would that be to Tennessee if they don't have him back next year, if he stays in? Come on back on the sports horse.